Hello, I'm Aulis. I've been playing Star Wars Galaxies off and on since the early days and providing support professionally for over two decades. Today, I'm going to attempt to explain why there's so much variance in the Star Wars Galaxy servers out there and show how to get started on the Star Wars Galaxies restoration server at swgr.org. To understand this variance, you first need to understand a little bit about the history of this game. Star Wars Galaxies is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game released by Sony Online Entertainment in June 2003 and officially available until December 15, 2011, just five days before the release of Star Wars Old Republic. In the Star Wars Galaxies restoration server, the galaxy takes place in 3 ABY on the Star Wars timeline after the Battle of Hoth. It started as a sandbox game, which is made pretty clear by the game's tagline, seen on your screen now and sometimes when your game is loading. There was a lot of backlash for two patches in particular. The Combat Upgrade, or Publish 15, released April 2005, was an overhaul of the combat system meant to add diversity and balance. New Game Enhancements, or Publish 25, released November 2005, provided a more traditional leveling experience and was intended to allow players an opportunity to more quickly experience what it was like to be in the movies. A lot of players disliked these updates so much that they made their own server so they could play the game with the updates that they liked the most. This caused some divide among the community with servers from three different eras. The pre-CU era is any time before the combat upgrade. The CU era is any time between the combat upgrade and new game enhancements. And the NGE era is any time after new game enhancements. There's a lot of things these updates changed. I'm just going to mention a few. The combat upgrade added the concept of levels. Before this, what you could do and how effective you were was purely based on the skills you learned. The addition of levels also affected your gameplay in a number of ways. For example, how much experience you gain and how effective you are in combat is based on your and your enemy's level. The amount of damage you deal changes based on your enemy's level. And when you're in a group and near a higher level player, your level raises. This update also added the concept of armor categories while keeping the same armor types that existed before like padded and bone. Armor also had debuffs, and in order to mitigate these debuffs, you had to spend a significant amount of skill points in the correct elite profession. With this update, you could only queue up one skill at a time, with timers determining when you can recast the same skill. Before this update, you could requeue as many number of skills as you wanted with no timers. What stats entertainers give you buffs on also changed with this update. Before the combat update, an entertainer would buff you on either mind or focus and willpower depending on which kind of entertainer you went to. After this update, entertainers have a lot of different stats to choose from when you're getting buffs. For example, there are buffs on your attributes, combat-related buffs, and crafting-related buffs. The new game enhancement update requires you to select a single profession, whereas before that update, you could mix and match skills from multiple professions. They also restricted the number of professions to nine Whereas before that update, there were 29 elite professions mixed among five basic professions that you could select your skills from. They also allowed you to become a Jedi right from the beginning, whereas before you had to unlock force sensitivity through gameplay before you could train as a Jedi. And they allowed you to point and click on an enemy to cast a default skill, whereas before you had to select a target and then cast your skill. The Star Wars Galaxy's restoration server is based on the combat upgrade while tying together the best parts of every SWG era. This allows you to still mix and match skills from multiple professions, requires unlocking force sensitivity before you can train as a Jedi, while keeping many of the other updates introduced with NGE and all the expansions. 
a link to where you can get more information on Star Wars Galaxy's Restoration, as well as references for the material used during this video will be provided in the description. Now, let's set up the game already. First, open your browser to swgr.org. If you haven't already, click the button at the top to register an account. You're allowed to have one account per person, and the first time you log into the launcher, you'll be prompted to attach this to a computer. You're allowed to have your account attached to two computers, but each computer can only be attached to one account. Once you've registered, to download the client, click the Play button in the menu at the top, and scroll down to where it says Download the SWG Restoration Installer. Click that link to download. Once the download's done, go ahead and execute the installer. And it should take you to the license agreement page at the beginning. Once you're finished reviewing that, click I agree to continue. I'm going to use the default installation folder, but note if you have Star Wars Galaxies installed for other servers as well, do not choose the same location as any of those servers because doing so will make those servers no longer function. You'll want to choose a new location for this to install. So once this is installed, go ahead and launch the client. And it'll start downloading the game. It's going to take a little bit, so while that's happening, I'm going to show a few tools, starting with the skill calculator. When you start off, you're going to have novice in all of the basic professions. So that's entertainer, artisan, scout, medic, brawler, and marksman, wherever that one is. Um, but you only have 250 skill points to use. Now, if you plan on mastering professions all the way, that means you will at most be able to learn two, maybe three professions. Uh, and that means you're going to have to unlearn some of those novice professions, regardless of what you choose to learn. You don't have to do that right away, though. You start off with all those novice professions, so you have a chance to test them out and see what you like. You can also use the skill calculator to help you choose what you want. For example, let's say we want to be a Terracossi artist. If you choose that from the list and scroll down, you'll notice underneath Terracossi Novus, it says Novus Brawler. That indicates you must learn something from Brawler before you can become a Terracossi Novus. So if we go to the Brawler profession by clicking that link and go to the top, you'll notice there's some list of profession names at the top of each of the trees. This indicates which trees you must learn in order to become that profession. For example, if you want to be a Terracossi novice, you have to first learn Unarmed 4 and Two-Handed 4. When you're learning these skills, especially at the beginning, it's recommended that you learn an entire tree first, rather than learning some boxes from multiple trees. This is because it's best to be good at something at the beginning rather than a jack of all trades. For example, if we click on Unarmed 1, you'll notice you get Unarmed Defense, Speed, Accuracy, and Damage. And as you learn each of the other boxes in this tree, you get even more stats in those same stats. So let's say we've learned all of our Unarmed and Two-Handed and we're ready to become a Terracons. So you learn the novice box. You can use a similar methodology for learning the, the stats here as well. At some point, you'll reach Master Terracossi. So you can go ahead and click on that on the skill calculator so all the points are used up. Now, let's say you also want to be able to create your own creatures that you can take with you in combat and use as mounts. Um, so as a creature handler, you can tame pets. Um, but as a bioengineer, uh, you can create your own pets and customize their stats. So if we want to be a bioengineer, we'll notice at the bottom you have to have skills in Scout and Medic. So under Scout, we need one tree. So after we learn the hunting tree, we also need Medic skills. 
And under medic, you'll see we only need the one tree, organic chemistry. But if you want to be able to heal, you'll probably want this medical support tree as well. And then now we can go back to bioengineer and we've learned our scout and medic skills. So now we can become a bioengineer. And we'll go ahead and um, learn all those points on the skill calculator. And now we're left with nine skill points that you could spend elsewhere. Another resource that's helpful in selecting your profession is the Prima Guide. If you go back to the launcher, there's a, a link here that says Prima Guide. This is a PDF document um, that was written back when the game was still actually live. Um, and this goes over a lot of detail about the game, including professions and everything else. Um, so this is, this is a good resource that gives you an overview of what each of those does. Uh, that you can use as a reference. Another good place is the wiki. Under wiki, if you go to wiki home, you'll find a link for each of the professions. And here you'll find descriptions of the professions as well as some tips on playing them uh, here as well. Now, some of, the, some of these will have more uh, information than, than others. Another place you can go to for help is Discord. If you go to community and then Discord, you'll find a link to join the Discord for Star Wars Galaxy's Restoration. Here you can find places to request help, join up with other people that are playing the game, etc. And the last tool that I want to show you is going to be under Tools, and it's the Resource Tracker. Uh, this is helpful if you are going to be crafting, because depending on which recipe you're, you're making, not only do you need a specific resource, but certain stats need to be high, on that resource in order for you to make a good quality item. So this is going to tell you which resources are available to be harvested currently with the date representing when it was first seen. And we saw earlier that the download here is done. So now let's look at the settings on the launcher. So when you click that launcher, it opens this window here where you can choose between the test center and live. I'm going to go ahead and use the test center and I'll need to hit save here in order for that to save. And then also under this same launcher and game settings, if you click game settings, this will load the client's game settings. And under graphics, you can set your resolution. I'll just keep it at the default. And if you like to play in borderless window mode um, or full screen window mode, uh, just check both of these boxes here, window mode and borderless window. I'm going to just use window mode. And then under game, SWG restoration does have jump to light speed, uh, which allows you to do space combat. Uh, so you may want to make sure you have an appropriate joystick selected here if you plan on doing that. All right, so now we can go ahead and launch the game. So by default, you're allowed to have two characters. Um, you can unlock a third character slot by completing a quest, which I'll show you later. And Jedi's are planned to get a fourth character slot. You're able to create one character every 24 hours. I've already got my third character slot unlocked, so I'm going to create a new one here. There's only one galaxy to choose from. If you want to change to the other server, you need to go back to the launcher and go to um, the launcher settings. There may be some difference in the starting stats for these races. Um, those are arguably negligible. Um, the Prima Guide has information on that, um, if you want to read about that. Um, but um, I'll just choose one at random here and go with the default name. Uh, you can have your character renamed after 90 days if you want, but do note that the old name does not become available for reuse, even if you delete the character. And for customizing your appearance, note you don't have to be stuck with whatever you choose here permanently. An image designer can always change anything about your appearance you want. Um, 
depending on how high they are in image design, they may be somewhat limited to their options. Uh, but if you go to a master image designer, they should have pretty much all the choices available to them. I think that's enough for part one. Next time, we'll log into our new character for the first time and go over some tips for getting started, including where to start the quest to unlock your third character slot.